Okay, folks, so in the last video, I was able to get the um, engine pod off of the boat without doing too much damage. I cut the five inches off that I want to make it shorter, and then I tried to save the flange, or I did save the flange. I cut these little wings off, and then I cut the flange loose from the scrap with the table saw. And I had some scrap aluminum, it was too heavy, so I cut it down to a manageable size. And I got the um, the new aluminum kind of rough fitted onto the pod and pretty much ready to move to the foundry and start welding. Okay, the original flange is back on the back of the boat and it's uh, keyed in place with the bolts which are going in the old bolt hole. So I know it's in the right place. And then I put this uh, stainless steel unistrut across the back of the boat. And it is parallel with the bottom of the boat and the top of the boat. So these wings, these aluminum wings, should follow that. And that's no problem. Actually, after I messed with it for a while, I realized I could have done a better job on the workbench. So all I'm going to do right now is put a medium weld here, a medium weld here. I'm going to take it off and put it on the workbench and uh, straighten it both ways make sure it's flat against the transom and which means it'll be flat tight against the workbench and i'm using a straight edge to make sure the two additional wings are parallel they're not going up or down or something now weld that and then i can re-drill this hole which is hidden and then i can plug this hole this hole and this hole and re-drill them in about an inch um, and then this part is probably in pretty good shape. Ready for the first welds. Got everything clamped down tight. It's straight. The joints are clean. Um, the, the flange fits flat to the table, which means it's going to fit flat to the transom. So I'm going to do a little welding. So with the flange part flipped over, I can weld out here and I can fill this hole with a weld because this is abandoned and these two holes will have to be filled but I'll have to flip it the other way. So I'm getting ready to weld this a little bit. I'm considering this a non-critical weld because it's going to be in compression and the metal is really thick so uh, I'm comfortable doing these welds myself but I know my welds are not super duper so later on we'll hire out. Okay, yeah, I got those couple of little welds done respectably. And those two holes plugged. And now I'm going to flip it back over. I've got four holes to plug from the other side. And I'm going to make another pass on one or two of my welds that I did uh, Friday, I guess. This is Monday. So these are my new locations for my holes. And I just put them, I left room for a full washer. And that's where I'm going to put the hole. And then I did a marking stick and brought it over here. So if I wouldn't have moved them, the bolt would have been right here. But just moving them in a little bit gives me a couple of inches of bolt sticking out the back where you know I got room for my wrench and room for a nut and washer without being in a bind. So that's why I moved that um, outside row of holes in a little bit. Wasn't much, probably an inch maybe. So the way the motor was last bolted to the uh, pod, I was in this hole, third from the top but I was all the way tight to here. So I can lower the top, but I'm not gonna be able to lower the bottom. So I'm gonna drill another hole in the bottom, um, probably so it'll be in the middle here and weld the other hole shut. Pretty sure I'll have to lower the motor because I'm shortening the, uh, the pod. I'm bringing the motor closer to the transom. So I'm, I'm gonna get a step ahead. I'm gonna be ready for it. So I got the new holes drilled um, to lower the engine. Now I may not lower it that much, but that puts me in the center of the adjustable range, so it gives me flexibility. In the old holes, I have uh, sanded and I uh, clean the inside of the hole with the, a little pencil grinder so I can fill it up with weld. That needs to be sealed up, otherwise water could get into the engine pod and just add weight. It won't really hurt anything, but it'll just add weight in the back, which I don't want. I'm having to move the access hole back, cutting with my jigsaw, and I use soapy water. Um, oil's probably better, but it makes everything, you know, oily. The 
the six holes I plugged this morning. They got hard, so I grind, ground them down flush. And I'm getting ready to put the flange on so I can drill the holes that, uh, that I moved and drill new holes here. So I'm gonna put it on, I'm gonna snug it up, not gonna kill it, and I'm gonna put it on dry. And I'm gonna actually weld the pod onto it while it's bolted to make sure it's all copacetic. And we're gonna put braces on the wings and weld them to the pod, also while it's on it. And then we'll take it off and I'll finish the uh, patching the fiberglass with it off. And then I can finish welding it out and painting the pod separately. So the flange part of the engine bracket is uh, snugged up. Now I'm gonna drill these six new holes. Now the two at the top I know are gonna be fine. These four are gonna come kind of close to the backing plate on the inside, which is epoxied into place. So hopefully it will be far enough into that backing plate where it'll get by. We'll put those bolts in and then I'll start measuring on where I can put bolts on the new wings that are gonna brace up the whole thing. Okay, six holes drilled, six bolts stuck from the outside. Let's go inside and see what they look like. Okay, we're good. The top one is right here, and the bottom two are right here. They're in the aluminum plate. They're not centered, but that plate is epoxyed on, and I don't want to pry it off because of the damage it will do. And the same thing on this side. They hit the aluminum, and the top one is great. So now I need to measure and see how far over to drill the remaining holes. Right, we're gonna wrap it up today, but I had a good day. The bracket, the flange is fixed to the back of the boat. Dry, it's not, it's coming back off. Um, all the holes drilled, all the bolts work. Everything's lovely. It's up there snug. So tomorrow I'm gonna put the pod, slip it on here and tack weld it. And then look at what I'm gonna do for the swim platform and tack weld that. And I think I'm gonna bring the whole thing to a, um, Aluminum fab shop and make sure I get good welds because my welds are not the best and this is kind of important so but Anyway, um, and while it's at the fab shop, I'll finish uh, repairing all the um, fiberglass uh, Damage that I did pulling this thing off So it's time for a compromise um, To make a strong swim step. I got this flange bolted on here. It's 5 8 of an inch thick. It's not gonna flex I could just cantilever out a couple of bars and put my curve in and I, I don't even think I need the brace on the bottom. But the whole point of this is to make the uh, engine bracket stronger. To do that, I feel like I should come with some 45s and tie the engine bracket to this plate so that some of the vibration and thrust um, that the engine is gonna give to the transom will be transferred to this bolt and this bolt and I don't know maybe curve around so I think I'm gonna go with round round this is the strongest per pound uh, some round aluminum and I think I'll put a 45 here a 45 here which will be like here and then I'll put one on the outside put a nice radius on it and I may still have enough yeah I don't know I don't know if that's going to be strong enough for the swim step, but my main goal is to make this strong. So, I could put a flat plate going this way, but that's not nearly as strong as the round. So, this is one inch uh, rigid aluminum conduit. I'm going to go around the corner and buy a couple of sticks. So, as soon as I plug these two old um, engine mounting holes, I'm free to tack this thing in place and it should never have to come off again. Of course, I've said that before. I'm just gonna tack it so it won't move and I'm gonna start fitting these uh, braces. So I got my first little pattern cut. So I need to get these angles onto a piece of um, one inch aluminum pipe. The problem is my miter saw doesn't turn that sharp. So 
I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So I tried using my old bandsaw to make the cuts, which would have been nice. But I couldn't hold the pipe still. Every time I'd start cutting, it would roll a little bit and pop the blade off the bandsaw. So I tried a few times, but this was frustrating, so I'll try something different. So I ended up using the miter saw, usually to cut it close. Um, it would cut a 45, but I really needed like a 52 or 53. And then the big grinder would have cut off wheel and um, kind of made some sloppy cuts, but I'd get them pretty close. And this is heavy wall stuff, so it's easier to fill a weld crack than it. it's not lightweight tubing. First pair of braces are cut and fit and clamped into place. And I am now going to tack the whole thing together. Um, right now there's just clamps holding the uh, engine pod to the flange. But I'm going to put some tacks on it and uh, build it tacked in place so that I don't know it'll fit when I take it off the boat. I don't have to worry about anything moving around. Let's do it. So a structure is only as strong as its weakest link. So if, um, with these 5 8 plates on the transom, if I weld back to the quarter inch sides of the pod, it's like I'm only as strong as the quarter inch sides of the pod, and then that could vibrate and I would lose um, the stiffness I'm trying to get. But luckily, um, I added these aluminum flat bars when I first um, modified this thing to bolt a swim step on and they're going to be huge in adding additional rigidity. Another structural concern is that weld across the top that fastens the pod to the flange. That's where like all the stress is. The motor wants to pull down and rip off the back of the transom just from the thrust and the weight. So I left the original flange so I have the original factory weld and now we're going to weld another weld on top of that but where the flange is and an additional weld can be put where the flange sticks under the uh, pod. I drill some holes to get some weld and we can put some weld around the circumference of the original access hole. So um, I'm comfortable now. So my gremlins and I were at peace with this whole situation so far. So the first two diagonals on each side are the ones that I think will help support the pod. They um, run back to the plate right next to a half inch through bolt. Um, the other aluminum pipe that you'll see me putting on is just to hold up the swim step. I don't think they'll add any more strength to the engine pot itself. I used pretty much two full 10 foot sticks of this one inch aluminum. Um, it looked kind of he heavy, but it is uh, two and a half pounds of stick. So that's just two and a half pounds on each side for the swim step brace and then I just started fitting the curve around the outside and this is just aesthetics you know just uh, made a few bends and looked at it and made a couple more bends and looked at it and we got one side that I liked and then we matched it or tried to match it as close as possible for the other side. My third pipe fitted this is the outside edge of the swim step and we got a mirror image right over there we're going to tack this in place this is not very strong. I'm going to have to put something under it to hold people weight. Um, these two short ones are, are very, very strong. But this one is just for the shake. Um, it would probably bend if somebody jumped on it. Third pipe on each side is cut and tacked. One more little bitty one with some very awkward cuts. Um, and then I'm going to put a... Have some some of this stuff that's three inches wide and I'm gonna come straight out to about here and I'm gonna do a half circle for these pipes and that's gonna give it some strength because this this um, flange right there is uh, it won't flex I don't believe it's pretty rigid and that'll keep this from flexing although it's not very bouncy it's pretty strong but it does need a brace getting all scientific here. I'm trying to make this pipe parallel with the last pipe. I'm marking the center of the um, external tube. That's where the edge of the notch needs to, no, that's where I need to cut it off. And I'm marking the inside, that's where I need to notch it too. So now being a cheater baby, I can't turn the saw more than 45 degrees, but if I pull the other end away from the fence a little bit, 
and hold on tight I can get a sharper angle than 45 and get it pretty close usually if I can hold it tight enough sometimes it yanks out of my hand and makes ugly sounds but most of the time I get a pretty good cut so in hindsight I can kind of picture myself doing this um, because I've been working on this thing for a bunch of days straight I'm tired and I want it to get over with so I'm just taking the the um, cut off wheel on the big grinder and just kind of freehand in these notches I really I really don't know how else to do them I guess theoretically I could have stood them up kind of halfway vertical in the drill press and got the right size hole saw and and coped the notch out that would have made a nice joint but that would have taken hours to make a setup for uh, these two little pipes so I just winged it um, and they're, they're gonna be all right so I'm just trying to cut a curve between the um, long point of the cut that I made with Meyer saw and the other black um, sharpie mark which is uh, inside of the curve and doing the best I can with the grinder to remove stuff pretty fast Pretty close. Number one, swim step pod brace lighter than the original is all fitted up the little lookouts are pretty tricky a lot of angles going on at the same time it's hard to mark so therefore my fits are pretty crappy but the second one is better than the first one and maybe the third and the fourth one will be better than the second one I'm start on that one right now okay I'm on the line drop the square trying here folks. Bear with me. Still not right. You can drop the square and pull that line up. I'm on the wrong side. Get it right here in a second. Hold on. Okay, that one's square. Pull up this line. This line. Ah. Okay, so I use the scrap, my scrap of wood, to transfer the marks onto my aluminum. Lining up this short point, which is the top. Drop those vertical, inch and a half. Put the curve for the pipe at the bottom of each one. And the, the thing that makes it tricky is these go through at a 45. So I set the miter saw to 45. I'm going to go make a lot of noise because my blade is letting so dark. Uh, marking the aluminum directly would have been a lot easier, but I couldn't get it into place because the end of that end of the aluminum is is uh, a bevel because the transom is not vertical it's sloped and the long point of the bevel was keeping me from getting the aluminum in the right location so I had to mark on the wood and then transfer it over which is another step another possibility of getting inaccuracies but uh, it was the only thing I could think of to do to make it work and it worked and then later on I slid a long 4x4 between the piece being cut and the fence and it just quieted down everything and made it a bunch safer and I figured that out right at the end. So this big grinder was a gift and when I first got it I ordered some uh, cut off blades, some thin blades from um, probably from China and they had a propensity to explode and I was like I was kind of gun shy of this machine. I didn't 
like using it. I didn't use it all that much. But I finally wore out all those blades and I bought another pack of blades and I I'm I don't know the brand or anything. But they've been wonderful. They I don't have any more problems with the blades breaking unless I really abuse it. So this thing's turned into a pretty useful tool. It's heavy, but useful. So, I just put my last cantilever brace, this one, and I'm getting better at it, but I thought it was going to be the last one, but, and I spread it out enough to get the swim ladder so it'll fit between these two. I couldn't get it snug because I have to leave room to get this bolt out, but at least I have room for it to get in there. And now, you know, hindsight, I'm thinking the ladder ought to go over there. Because one, the battery's over here, so it's already got more weight on this side. And this hose is going to be right here, and I know people are going to be tempted to grab it, trying to get out the water. And that's probably not a good thing. So, unfortunately, the ladder won't fit between these two. So I'm going to cut this one out, take it off, and move it over, and we're going to put the ladder on this side. I think I'll kick myself in the butt if I don't spend them. 45 minutes redoing that now and I'll regret it forever and ever so it shouldn't be too hard to cut loose I just have a few tacks on it but I did kind of waste this piece of aluminum because it's all butchered up now okay with the exception of the two little strips of aluminum that I'm going to add to um, bolt the uh, ladder it's all tacked together so I need to get it off and get it to a welding shop I didn't want to drop it on the floor because it's pretty awkward. So I used the little straps and it worked okay. Um, I did put the strips for the ladder support because it's going to prevent some of the other welds. So we'll do that after the fact. We'll let it get, I'll weld it out and then I'll put those on there. I can do that myself. Um, and have a name of a semi-professional workshop. The guy does a lot of aluminum welding and I'm going to bring it over there this afternoon. and leave it with him and let him weld it up and I got my engine bracket back from the welder um, it's not 100% complete because I got tired of waiting on him, so I just went and got it together for a week. And he was okay with that. The stuff that's left is cosmetic wells, and I'm super happy with it. Um, so I've got a lot of cleanup to do with this and then painting. And I have to decide what platforms I'm going to use for the swim platforms, what material I'm going to deck it with. So the swim step <coughs> going under here on this side. <clears throat> like yo, so I'm going to add a piece of aluminum under the bottom on both sides to be able to catch the bolts. Um, kind of funny, when we had our first little ski boat years and years ago, we had a single swim step that put like eight inches in the water and we didn't have a problem. And then when I got my second boat, <coughs> Seabound, we had two steps. And then when I had Grand Travail, my big wooden Grand Banks, we had three steps in the water. And now, when I started shopping for steps, I saw this one with four steps and I went, ooh, that looks good. So I don't know what's going on with that deal. It can't be anything to do with their age, I don't think. So they're fitting. I got the little pieces gnawed off of them so they'll go over these wells. And I just need to, uh, Clamp them and weld them. It needs to be a pretty good weld because the uh, swim 
the anchor will be in tension. It'll be trying to break the welds um, when the big guys get on there. So you can get a good bit of weld along here and here and here. It'll be all right. And weld it up. So while I got it upside down, I might as well drill a hole so I don't have to drill them laying on my back looking up later on. Um, I can't get all the original holes from the stainless steel bracket, but I can add different ones. So the outboard bracket is complete. It's time to start my love-hate relationship. Well, mostly hate. Uh, relationship with fillers and paint. I need to paint everything, including the back of the boat and the swim step. And we'll make that another video. This one's getting kind of long. And we may toy around with uh, adding a flotation uh, pod underneath the uh, engine bracket. So thanks for watching and I will definitely get this boat back in order one day.